call our meeting to order. Uh, it's our Nash County Board of Commissioners meeting, uh, mid-month meeting, October 16th for 2.30. Uh, invocation is our first thing on the agenda. Our second thing on the agenda, Mr. Cohn, would you mind having that for us, sir? Sure. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for the rain you sent, Lord. We thank you for all the, the other blessings of life you give to us each and every day, Lord. Forgive us when we take them so much for granted, Lord, and we don't give you the praise and honor and glory for it. Lord, we just pray now that you will be with us during this meeting, Lord. We pray that everything we do and say here today will be for the citizens of Nash County, which we represent, and we just pray that you, you would be with us and conduct us as you see fit. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 And you and I are going to confuse the man up there because I prayed last night to have no rain this week, so we can get back to work. Well, he'll, he'll sort it out, I'm sure. <laughs> he, he, he knows best, right? He does. <laughs> he does indeed. Uh, as we do each month at our mid-meeting month, we uh, generally have an outside provider uh, that is one of our funding agencies or potentially one of our agencies that somewhat fund us. Uh, and then today we have uh, traveling tourism, and we have Miss Barbara Green uh, to make a presentation for us. And Barbara is always lively and full of energy, which is the type of person you need to do the job she does. And welcome today, Barbara. Come on up. Thank uh, you. We turn the floor over to you. Awesome. Uh, just a brief explanation for those that uh, may not quite understand. We've got a complicated <coughs> system in Nash County. <laughs> Unlike some other counties, we have a TDA board, uh, which I am a chair of, and we have 14 other members on there. A certain number of them have to be providers, which means they have to be a collector of the tax. Some more of them have to be in the tourism business, which means they need to run restaurants, maybe convenience stores. And then we have some at-large members, and those members are appointed by the Board of Commissioners and serve a four-year term. And then under that, uh, by statute, uh, well, it, this part's not by statute, but the funding part of it is we have Travel and Tourism who runs, that's a different board. They are a self-elected board, and they run the day-to-day -day operations of the Travel and Tourism uh, industry in Nash County. They automatically get six or, or two-thirds of the funding that Nash County receives, which is three cent, uh, three percent of what the, a hotel room cost, we have a 5% tax. Two of that automatically goes to the city of Rocky Mount to fund uh, capital improvement projects. Currently been uh, going in for the debt service on the uh, sports complex and then the Imperial Center is where those funds go. Uh, and that uh, funding has to be approved by the TDA board. And then uh, Barbara actually works for Nash County as a Nash County employee but she answers to the Travel and Tourism uh, Board itself. So he, she has a difficult job sometimes keeping her board happy and keeping this board happy, but so far she's done a great job of it. Dad, I'll turn it over to you. Well, thank you, Robbie. I appreciate that. I have a very exciting job. I love my job. Uh, I'm lucky I've been in the tourism industry since 2001 right here. So I knew a lot of people when I got this job a little over a year ago. Um, so the first thing I wanted to do was got with the board. The board was telling me what all needed to be done. It wasn't a small task. They wanted uh, new billboards, new travel guide, new website or a refreshed website. Uh, so I was like, okay, let's see what we're going to tackle first. So the first thing that we decided we were going to do was I would go out locally and I would go to all the local attractions. And, you know, people may not realize this, but there's a lot of attractions here, right here in Nash County. People want to say, you know, there's not a lot to do. They're wrong. And we've been proving it to them, and we're still proving it to them now. Um, so I did go out, and I went into Spring Hope. I went into Bailey. Uh, I don't know if anybody's been to Dan Finch's Nursery Pottery in Bailey. Incredible. We got an incredible person right there in Bailey. So anyway, I went up to the Imperial Center uh, Sports Complex and decided, you know, we need to include everybody and everything that we possibly have and we need to create this new travel guide. The travel guide that you have right there in front of you. So that's what we did. We went out and we got pictures and I got information straight from them. 
So we got that done. Then we decided, okay, we've got our travel guide. Let's look at our billboards. You know, now, you know, back in the day, you were able to show, okay, I have this many hotels, this many restaurants, and that got them here. Well, now your towns is all getting restaurants and hotels, so then we had to focus, okay, people want to do something, so let's focus on, just like we did here, in our travel guide, what there is to do. So we've got our billboard showing that not only do we have hotels, restaurants, shopping, but we also have the Imperial Center. We also have a, a great dog park, which, you know, fortunately has brought people off of the, the interstate for. Um, so we are showing the Veterans Memorial. Uh, that's another one, the longest wooden span bridge. You know, we've got a lot of things that can bring people right here to us that makes us stand out. So we've got a great campaign going down 95, coming north or south showing people the exciting things that are happening. And you see that almost there destination, Rocky Mount, um, that is stopping people at our exit because that's where your exit is. Um, and people are stopping for that. And so then we got that done. So then we were like, okay, we've got our travel guides, which we have at all the hotels, all the welcome centers. We have them at the Raleigh-Durham Airport. We have them in the D.C. Uh, Greyhound bus station there at Union, State, Union Station. So we said the next thing we had to do was our website. All these wonderful things are happening, but let's add it to the website. So we started doing banners on our website and creating the same colors, the same feel. So when people look at that, they know that's us. So we got our website redone. We used our pictures uh, there from our travel guides. And now you can also follow from our social media events, they come straight to the website. So whether you're looking at it locally or whether you're looking at it in another state, in another country, you'll see all the things that are happening right here in Nash County. So we got that done and then we decided, okay, now we've got this done. This is all in a year. This is, this is just something. My board is active. We did our social media. So we started being the place to go to when you want to see what's happening here in Nash County. And we had to build our followers. We only had 2.1 thousand followers. And we said, no, we have to do better than this. So we started working with our local restaurants, <coughs> our locally owned restaurants. And we started going out and once a week, I know y'all have probably seen it. If y'all have followed Destination Rocky Mount, we're going to the restaurants. I take a picture of what I'm eating and I share this and then I have followers. I've been doing this since August and I have followers that follow me at these restaurants and now they're sharing this information. These restaurants are getting anywhere from 15,000 views to 25,000 views in six days. And that's incredible. That's how many followers now that we have that follow us on this. Um, and we continue to grow and show the the positive things that are happening here with the Rocky Mount Mill, their district over there continues to grow and we want to share this information and get more people to see, you know, we are a great place to visit. We have everything there is to do. So um, we have been doing this and working with the Rocky Mount Sports Complex. That's another thing that we've been doing with helping them with tournaments. Um, I also go to some conferences and I meet with sports planners and I bring this information back and I share it with our sports complex so that we can follow up on these to increase our um, tournaments that are coming in. And this is working. Uh, we continue to work together um, to get this done. And then recently there'll be an announcement coming, but as much as we've done and grown, we have finally got to the point where we are ready to uh, get a marketing firm to help us. And we'll be announcing that soon of, of who's going to be helping us as well. Um, but, you know, working here in this, in this county is amazing. The people that support us and we show them that we support them. I'm getting phone calls, emails, uh, even Facebook messages all the time. Uh, asking, you know, can they get more of our travel guides? We, we got 35,000 travel guides printed when we did it, and I'm down to like five now. Um, so we're going to be reprinting, but 
we're going to reprint some new things because just in this year, so many things have been added to Nash County. And it's amazing to see all the things that are going on and to be part of it and help promote a county that I love and have been here in this area for 30 years. And watching it grow and seeing people excited about it and talking positive, that's what I like. You know, one of my pet peeves is somebody telling me there's nothing to do. I will get them because we, there's always, every day, there is something to do in Nash County, and that's what we are getting across, not only to our local people, but also to the people outside, showing them why they need to come here, and they need to stay more than one night. They need to stay a couple of nights and experience all there is to experience here in Nash County. So, okay. and we did something fun. This was so much fun for me. Uh, we worked with Visit NC, and we had somebody come and do a video for us because we're like, okay, it's one thing to show all of this, but where can we condense it down into like three minutes? Because you're not going to keep somebody's attention for 10, 15. So we went to 22 locations in two days, and we created this video. And this is Al Nash County.
other questions on the commission? Did I tell you she had a lot of energy about her? <laughs> <laughs> well, there was just so much to tell. Yeah. Great job. We appreciate you being here today. Appreciate what you do. Uh, I thank every since uh, Barbara has been here, our revenues have increased each year regardless of what our economy was doing. Uh, so we find out strange things affect our uh, revenue. Uh, hurricane last year, we determined that the big increase was due to the hurricane, which is not a necessarily a positive thing, but uh, uh, sometimes, but this year, or this past year is, uh, or the year we're currently in is doing very well also. Jonathan, we're, we're okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. It'll take a little while. Okay. All right. Any, any other thing on that? I will mention that Miss Wells is out today for the benefit of the press. Uh, she is at Nash General Hospital, went on Saturday. I did go by about 12 o'clock today and spent about 30 minutes with her and went over the agenda just to see if she had any major concerns about any item on the agenda. She seemed to be doing much, much better. Uh, she did think one time she was going home tomorrow, but she found out this morning she would not go home tomorrow, maybe Wednesday, maybe Thursday. Uh, but uh, I do believe she's headed up here. I think she was actually pretty sick on Saturday when she chose to go to the hospital, <coughs> from what I understand. Our uh, next item on our agenda is a presentation by Valerie Harris with Soil and Water. This will be our inside presenter for this month. And are you ready, ma'am? I am. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Just want to speak a little bit about Nash Soil and Water Conservation. And we, too, have um, our Soil and Water District Board. Uh, Bobby Joe Fisher is here today. He's the chairman of our board, and we thank Bobby Joe for being here. Uh, talking about our um, agriculture and natural resources, I just want to give you an update on the stream um, debris removal project that's going on. As you know, we submitted an application to the North Carolina Division of Soil and Water Conservation um, for debris removal for Stony Creek, totaling $270,000, uh, and the clean out of the Tar River that totaled $132,000. And with excellent documentation from the um, 83rd Civil Affairs Battalion, um, when we worked with EMS, we, um, we were funded $284,840 in the first round of funding, and we chose to use that toward the clean out of Stony Creek. The 83rd Battalion, again, was contacted by EMS and floated the entire Stony Creek and the, um, also the Tar River, and it was a part of the Hurricane Matthew Resilient um, Redevelopment Plan. They took photos of the actual debris and provided our GPS coordinates um, to support the locations. We thank them very much um, for their assistance. Um, since then, I've reached out to Patsy for more um, possible funding from the Golden Leaf Foundation on last Friday, and Patsy um, informed me that the Tar River Stream Cleanout is an um, eligible project um, for that, and Patsy and I will be working tomorrow starting on that, um, that grant for the um, Golden Leaf. And in our initial um, request for clean out, we asked for a turnkey project to be assisted by the Resource Institute out of Winston-Salem and was accepted um, for that. And once we receive a contract from the Division of Soil and Water Conservation, we are on ready with the Resource Institute for um, getting everything uh, started for our clean out process. I want to talk to you a little bit about our um, program funding. We, uh, Soil and Water Conservation is our local um, county agency. We work day to day with the Natural Resources Conservation Service. They are our federal partners. And I was asked to share uh, some of their programs and what they are working on. Thursday of this week, we uh, go to Greensboro for, uh, excuse me, Wednesday and Thursday, we go to Greensboro for our EQIP rollout. And we'll learn more about what funding um, is available. We know that the application process goes on all the time. So anytime you're interested in any of the federal programs as well as the state programs, please come by our office and sign up. I've shared with you um, some of the information from NRCS um, helping you to help the land. Just want to point out a few things. Over the past few years, we've been working about soil health. 
and to improve the soil health in Nash County ultimately improves the health and also the production of our crops. So we want to share with our farmers the need for the um, improvement in soil health. The other flyer that you have talks about the Farm Bill. The Farm Bill changes in 2018, so if you have any concerns about current Farm, farm Bill, let us know. Our, uh, of course, your legislators, your um, local people, that how you would like to see changes um, in the 20, 2018 Farm Bill. EQIP is the largest in uh, North Carolina, the Environmental Quality Incentive Programs. It is the largest of the programs and one that we share the most it, most with here um, with soil and water conservation. The CSP, Soil Stewardship Program, is also another one. The Agriculture Conservation Easement Program, what they've done, they have rolled all of the easement programs together, um, WRP, FRP, uh, all of those are now under the um, ACEP program. And the RCPP is a conservation partnership program. That one is um, more regional, of course, so if you have a concern here locally in Nash County, also some of the other concerning counties, we would uh, band together and go with our state conservationists to uh, seek funding for our, um, for our region. Also in your folder, you'll find the Equip Organic um, and also the um, assistance that you can transition into organic. One of the things about our programs is that they do uh, focus on our farming community. If you don't have a farm and you think you're interested in doing so, please come by and see us. We'll, uh, we will work with the Farm Service Agency, get you signed up as a farm, and start assisting you both financial assistance and technical assistance um, on your farm. So if you have any questions about any of our programs, any, uh, if you need any more technical assistance on your farm, and again, um, our natural resources that we're working on with our stream debris clean out, please see us. We are located in the Agriculture Center here in Nash County. Are there any questions? Question to board members, so Mr. Harris. Yeah. I know we're uh, yes, have one. <laughs> I always do. That's all right. <laughs> Uh, in, in connection with our waters, our streams. Yes, sir. Uh, on cleanup, uh, especially if it's a, a, a hurricane. Yes, sir. Of that nature, you, can you get any grant money from uh, FEMA? Um, normally, the FEMA programs that come through wouldn't come through our department in this way. Not to say that Nash I, County. I know it wouldn't come through your department, but yes, sir. I'm saying, can your department? apply for some of that grant money to clean these streams up. I can certainly look in look into that. I'm not aware of it, but I, I, I can I can look into the possibility. Yeah, because I believe uh, in 99, I think they did get some, they had to clean up the a d lot w of trees w out of the Tall River, especially over in the Rocky Mountain area. Yes, sir, it was the WRP program and that came through our Natural Resources Conservation Service. And again, not to say that they weren't in, um, somehow connected with FEMA, but it came to Nash County <coughs> through, our NR, through our NRCS and the WRP program, which is now listed under that um, list that I was sharing with you, the Agriculture Conservation Easement Program. Like that was joint funding for FEMA as well as school engineers, what I recall back at that time. And, and our assistance um, part of that was, again, through our Natural Resources Conservation Service and our local soil and water district. Other questions of Ms. Harris? We greatly appreciate it. You're welcome. It's just always available if you think of one. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say, I think they're doing a good job down there. I used to work out of that building. Yes, sir. Kept up with them and, and cooperated with them uh, on conservation. So. Uh, I think they're doing a good job there. Thank you, Mr. Duffy. You have a comment, Mr. Lane? Yeah, I'd just like to say that um, this is a great example of um, the cleanup project. It's a great example of um, citizen participation with their county commissioners. Um, about two months ago, we get a we got several complaints, um, and Mr. Uh, 
Mr. Outlaw brought to our attention of the Stony Creek problem yes. and a certain individual um, was very concerned about it and we, we uh, talked to Valerie found out there might be some money out there and uh, she applied for it we got it now we got some more money coming from hopefully from um, Golden Leaf and um, it, it the citizen input though got us jumping yes. you know got us moving and so um, I, think, I just think that's a good example of citizen input having an effect on policy here in Nash County. Well said. My original agenda had an item five, which was a purple heart party, which apparently fell off. What happened to that? Um, we are going to present something to you that actually recognizes all veterans okay. and not just specifically for purple, purple heart. heart veterans. Okay. So something is coming. Yes. Okay. I yes. had just gotten a call on that some time ago about this purple heart. I want to make sure we yes. bring it up later. And Tyler Staberman is here with us today. Okay. Well, we'll actually have it with the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were going to talk about it or not, but right. that's what it looked like initially. We were thinking of yeah, ones for all veterans, you know. Right. Okay. Saying, but, uh, so y'all y'all still working on that? Right. I'm working, I'm working with uh, uh, Rick Thomason. Right. On that. That, that's <laughs> the individual that brought and showed that to me some time ago. All right, good. We'll look forward to getting that then. Next item on the agenda then is uh, Northern Nash Sewer District Contract Amendment. Mr. Tolson, you present? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Um, I am here to present to you uh, the contract amendment that is required in order to be able to update the professional engineering report for our um, Northern Nash Water and Sewer District um, project that we've got ongoing. Part of the process was through the state revolving fund loan that we were awarded. We had submitted, we had originally go, we were going to go after USDA funds. Uh, the PER was drafted in USDA format and since we got an award of a state revolving fund loan, we have to update the PER into the uh, state revolving fund format. So what you have is a uh, contract amendment to the original contract for it for uh, $17,500 uh, to update the uh, professional engineering report. And we just are recommending that you approve us to go ahead and approve these funds to move forward. All of these funds are, by the way, um, reimbursable through the SRF revolving fund loan so we will be reimbursed for any of these fees and these are actually a little bit lower than we were anticipating for the original uh, revision to the PER. We had planned that we would need to do this if the SRF was indeed approved. Any questions Mr. Tolson from uh, commissioners on this? Is this a change order? It's an, amend, it's an amend, amendment, amendment to the contract, yes, sir, because it is additional okay. services, and it falls under the category of additional services that they were covering um, hourly. It was pointed out, Mr. Belfield, in, in one of our very early meetings on this grant that we applied for, if indeed we got it, that this item would have to be redone in a different format. So I've kind of been expecting it, uh, even though uh, I was hoping uh, it wouldn't cost us anything, but it looks like it's going to cost us $17,500 to get it reformatted. And Mike, you, you apparently think this is a, a good price for this. It's about half of what they originally thought it was going to be. Okay. It, it, is a, it is a fair price, but it's also less than what they had originally quoted. So. Okay, and it's grant eligible. So if yeah. no more questions, I'd enter. Oh, excuse I see me, it here now. Okay. I see it here Yeah, now. it's in your Part packet, I think. Yeah, I have read it. Okay, okay. Uh, entertain a motion for approval on this. Move for approval. Moved by Mr. Outfall, Mr. Outlaw, seconded by Mr. Combs. Any questions on that motion? All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed by a like sign, motion carries. Uh, next item on here, Mike, is also yours. It's an award to bid for the water line relocation at North Carolina DOT Bridge project. Uh, several months ago. And yeah. that's in your packet also, Mr. Fairfield. Several months ago, we came uh, in front of you with a request to seek bids for relocation of a water line that was going to impact the construction of the existing bridge over Saponi Creek on uh, Bachelor Road. Uh, DOT has contacted us and said that we needed to move our water line. It was in their easement, but we entered into a 
uh, utility re relocation agreement and design, reloca uh, design agreement with DOT to be reimbursed for the funds. Uh, this is just a follow-up. We have taken bids for the actual work that was designed by Wooten and we have moved forward with uh, last Thursday got a price of $54,000 for the um, uh, work to be done <coughs> to relocate the line. We are in a point where we need to move forward as quickly as possible so we can get out of DOT's way, if you will. They uh, look to start their work on the bridge in the next couple of months and we will need about a month to get the water line out of the way. This is short turnaround and quick turnaround, but we were lucky to get a price that was so close to the engineer's estimate when we were done. You were able to award based on the amount with only two bidders, I guess. It was an informal bid. We were based on the construction, um, based on the construction estimate for we were expecting them to all be in the sixty to seventy thousand dollar range. Uh, I can't explain why the one second bid is as high as it was. What we had done was we, we got word that we were not going to get enough bids to even open, uh, so we moved the bid date back by a week, uh, notified all plan holders, and they were able to then get numbers <coughs> in, and these two are the two that came in conforming to be able to open. Right. Any questions on this, Mr. Tolson? I think we should ask you to thank Mr. Bradley for participating. <coughs> Uh, based on the two numbers that you mm -hmm. got. Mm -hmm. uh, entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Move by Mr. Outlaw, second by Mr. Belfield. Any questions on that motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed by a like sign. Motion carries. Mr. Bolton, thank you. Sir. Next item on the agenda is a public hearing for community development block grant disaster recovery uh, by Ms. Patsy McGee. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Get used to these afternoon meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Nash County intends to submit an application for up to $1 million to complete the activities pursuant to recovery from damage <laughs> resulting from Hurricane Matthew. The application may include single family home homeowner rehabilitation and reconstruction, mobile home repair or replacement, acquisition for development of afforded affordable housing temporary rental assistance, flood insurance assistance, community recovery activities, and infrastructure in support of community recovery plans. All activities must ad address a federal national objective of low to moderate income benefit or urgent need. The pro proposed program will not involuntarily displace or tempor temporarily relocate any individuals as a result of the businesses and Section 3 individuals um, assisted by the program. Uh, Mike Barnett of McDavid, our consultant, is here again with us today. Um, he can comment on some more specifics regarding the program and the application is due to be submitted on uh, Friday, October 20th. The, um, The application, as it looks right now, will be centralized in mostly into housing, uh, which is what the uh, funding agency has requested. Uh, most of that into uh, single-family rehabilitation or uh, reconstruction. Uh, we have um, uh, try. We have decided to try to make sure and prioritize folks in the county that were not funded through uh, HMGP program uh, to make sure and give those folks a priority as far as the listing and listing those in the application. Uh, we also have had the possibility of assisting with the drainage, I don't know what the name of it is, but the drainage project in Nashville. Elm Street. The Elm Street drainage, if we can find part of that, that'll assist with this, since I think that's over budget. So, um, but that's one thing, other thing we're looking for. Uh, again, I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Um, any questions of Mr. Burnett from Board members. The action needed today is to hold a public hearing. It'll be our second public hearing. Mike, uh, is there any potential buyout included in this or is it just all rehabilitation? Acquisition is not an eligible activity. Okay. All right. And do we have sufficient number of damaged homes to uh, be able to utilize the majority of this money, you think? We feel, we feel like we do. And um, we've had, uh, we've had right. I've had right much input of folks calling, interested in the program. Right. Um, 
DEM also just sent out letters to uh, to unfunded HMGP applicants, and those folks have been calling in as well. So, well, what does that acronym mean? If you don't mind me asking, there's a um, <clears throat> HMGP Elevation Acquisition Program. Hazard Mitigation Grant Program. Thank you. It's a FEMA. It's a FEMA funded gotcha. program. I'm familiar with it now. I just I gotcha. sorry about that. Quite heard it in four, four, five letters before. <laughs> all right. Sorry about that. Y'all use them all the time. It's all just kind of just roll off. Fish the to keep up with them. <laughs> Any other questions? No comment. Uh, one thing that has always bothered me about these grants is <coughs> you have to hire somebody to manage it. Five percent could rehabilitate uh, two or three, uh, or at least I can say one home um, more. But you got but the grants require, and, and I never did. I can't see why the county can't manage it. Mr. Belfield, I, I share that concern with you, as you know from some of my previous comments, but something of this nature is so unpredictable, uh, being coming from a natural disaster, I don't think we can have folks on staff sitting over here waiting for us to have a disaster. No. Uh, and, and they would have but, to be available for this type of thing. Do, yes, sir. when we do. Right. Uh, seem like the name could. Okay. But you stated, which I wasn't aware of, that the grant itself, in itself, uh, required us to hire an outside agency to help us. But that, I know that. Okay. But I was just no, saying. No, I'm asking you that. I didn't just know something that. that I don't agree with. Sure, I understand. All right. Mm -hmm. Duly noted. Any other questions? Uh, we are asked to hold a public hearing on this matter, so I'd entertain a motion to go into public hearing. So moved. Moved by Mr. Belfield. Second. Second by Ms. Barnes. Any questions on that motion? All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, we're now in public hearing. Uh, does anyone from the public have any comment or any questions they'd like to uh, ask staff or Mr. Barnett uh, about this particular item? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I move that we close the um, public hearing. Moved by Mr. Belfield. Second. Second by Ms. Richardson. Uh, any questions on that motion? All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Any opposed by a like sign? Excuse me. Motion carries. Ms. McGee, what else would we need to do for this? Mr. Chairman, we, um, we'd like to have approved minutes as a part of the application on Friday. Is it all possible? So, if the board would could consider authorizing you to sign the public hearing, approve the public hearing minutes sure. uh, when they're prepared, that would be very helpful for the application. Well, to turn it into, we need board approval for me to approve the minutes, or is that to get yeah, we normally do it as a board? You do. Uh, we do. Okay. Uh, everybody understand that request. And <coughs> first of all, yeah. Madam Clerk, have you finished that five-hour public hearing? <laughs> uh, finish it? Can you have this by Friday? Can you use a certified copy, a certified letter from the clerk saying that this is what the minutes will say once they're approved? That's what we normally do. They have typically in CUBG requested that it is a certified copy of the approved minutes the approved of minutes. the public hearing of this last five minutes not of your whole meeting right. uh, okay. just, just just the public, public hearing, hearing where all those people yeah. came in just now and <laughs> <laughs> that would be my minutes <laughs> you clear on what he's asking for so we can have it to him before friday i think so i can i can help you with that okay, okay. Mm -hmm. all right uh it sounds like i need a motion to be able to sign those so uh, ask for that motion so moved moved by mr barnes there's second 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 by mr belfield any questions on that motion all in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed by a like sign? <clears throat> Seeing none, that motion carries. Thank you very much. Else we do for you, and I think we got you right Thank on schedule, sir. Thank you. Yes, Thank sir. You. Next item on the agenda. Uh, we had high-speed internet next on my old agenda. I think we had a cancellation due to an uh, unexpected event happening on that particular item, and we're going to schedule that later, Ms. McGee. The internet. Internet. 
Yes, sir. That That's going to be postponed by about a month. <clears throat> by about a month. Expect. Okay. Did you need time to speak to him? Because you're the next presenter. We're speaking. We're going to speak tomorrow. Okay. All right. Uh, next item then is Golden Leaf Grant Making Initiative. Mr. McGee, you back up. Take your time. Hmm. The application process is underway for the fiscal year 2018 Golden Leaf Foundation Community Based Grants Making Initiative in the North Central Regional Prosperity Zone. The counties included are Chatham, Durham, Edgecombe, Franklin, Bramble, Harnett, Johnston, Lee, Nash, Orange, Person, Vance, Wake, Warren, and Wilson. A county may apply for up to $1.5 million for up to three projects. The program is designed to target counties in the most need with funds that, that do the most good for the most people. The project should solve identified needs at the local level. The project should promote economic growth and development for the long term. The project should be ready to move the needle quickly. Projects should address economic development, education, workforce development, infrastructure, health care infrastructure, or agriculture. A minimum of a 20% local cash match is required for each project, with additional local investment enhancing a project's chances of being funded. With $11 million budgeted by Golden Leaf, and 22.5 million possible to be requested by the 15 counties. The process has the potential to be highly competitive. To begin the process with Golden Leaf, the county managers must submit letters of inquiry by noon on October 20th, which is Friday. The Golden Leaf Board will then decide in December which projects to invite for full applications and those proposals are due in mid-January. Then Golden Leaf is scheduled to announce awards in April of 2018. Nash County sent information about this funding opportunity <coughs> to agencies that attended one of Golden Leaf's information sessions during the summer and to other agencies involved in the identified program areas. We included information about the community-based grants making initiative, listed the major points in the process, and asked for letters of inquiry to be submitted to the county manager's office by September 25th. We received five project proposals, then met with Golden Leaf to discuss with them. Two appear to be competitive in this particular category for Golden Leaf grant funding. We recommend endorsement of the following two projects. Middlesex Corporate Center, Phase 1, Water, Sewer, and Road. The town of Middlesex and Nash County are developing, of course, as you know, Middlesex Corporate <coughs> Center, which is a 330-acre industrial park slash corporate campus. The project includes extension of water lines, extension of sewer lines, and extension of a paved road to serve Phase 1. Nash County will build a shell building and the project will take no more than one and a half years to complete. <coughs> Extending infrastructure further into Middlesex Corporate Center will allow Carolina's Gateway Partnership to market the site as shovel ready. We expect a large number of jobs in phase one as a result of this project. Jobs in Middlesex Corporate Center will help lower the high employment rate in Nash County. The proposed budget at this time is Golden Leaf $1,250,000 and Nash County $2,511,200. Okay, the second project is Nash Community College Advanced Manufacturing Expansion Equipment. The community college is building an advanced manufacturing facility, which is, um, the project includes state-of-the-art equipment for students in computer integrated machining electrical systems technology and supply chain management program. The project will be complete before the spring of 2018 semester. 
more hands-on time with this equipment, which is lathes, will lead to opportunities for students to obtain National Institute for Metalworking Skills credentials and the opportunity for students to participate in internship or apprenticeship programs or become employed at several um, industries who have given us letters of commitment for jobs. The proposed budget in the grant application at this time is 250,000 Golden Leaf and 40,000 North, I mean, Nash Community College Foundation for the equipment. So we ask the board to uh, endorse the submission of these two grant applications. And we, will, we met with Golden Leaf this morning and we will be continually revising them until um, we submit them before the noon deadline on Friday. The total would be $1.5 million for these two projects, for um, the Middlesex Corporate Center project, for which the town of Middlesex is the applicant, it would be $1,250,000 from Golden Leaf, and for Nash Community College Advanced Manufacturing Expansion, it would be $250,000 for the equipment. Question. Um, yes, sir. The 40000 does that meet the 20% local match requirement? It does not, but however, Golden Leaf is willing to take the um, North Carolina NC Connect um, funding as, as the match, okay. as part of the match, <coughs> according to my conversation with them this morning. Okay, thank you. That was a question I asked Patsy earlier this morning. I'm surprised they did that, but that's good. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If I may. Go ahead, sir. Um, this, the way they've set this up is we've got to actually submit these by Friday, and um, they put county managers in charge of the final decision, but we wanted to run it past the commissioners first. Um, and uh, so I would just ask, uh, make sure there's no objection to these two. Um, applications we did have three other ones which um, were very um, worthy however <clears throat> when Patsy met with Golden Leaf um, they did not feel they fit this <coughs> particular grant cycle uh, initiative um, but would um, be eligible perhaps for some other grant initiatives that Golden Leaf has Mr. Gibbs, if you don't mind, if you could name those other three, I, I know who they are because I, I kind of follow this thing, but if you could name them just so another commissioner gets asked about it. We did meet with Golden Leaf, or you did, and determined that it wouldn't be uh, looked on favorably at this point in time for one reason or another. And, and I've got those in my head, but I'm sure you do. I do too, okay. and I left my list over there. But Go one ahead. of them was communities and schools, just general support of their um, their programs. One of them was the Red Oak Teacherage Project, uh, renovation of that building. And one was NC Wesleyan College, um, uh, the um, logistics, logistics program. education program. And Those we were did, the other three projects. We did meet with uh, um, the president and his staff at <clears throat> Wesley and, and um, after she had met with Golden Leaf and uh, have directed them to meet with Golden Leaf about um, alternative uh, funding. Any other questions for board members on this? Uh, well, I think Paul should be answered question that I was going to ask, uh, have they given you uh, a go ahead and submit your application? Uh, because I, I think you said a question at first whether these would fit into uh, the grant line. The two where I'm asking for your endorsement. Um, oh, yeah, I understand that, but I was talking about, uh, uh, and, and I certainly will do that, but I, I was wondering uh, I think you said that it was a question that whether these 
applications it would fit into this grant line. That, that was the three that we are not submitting mm -hmm. that she just named. These two projects that we're asking for your endorsement, um, according to Golden Leaf staff, do fit into um, the categories for community-based grants making yeah. initiatives. The ones that we've gone over. We'll, we'll be competitive. We'll okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. That's correct. I think it was a unique, and I hadn't seen them do this before to go to LEAF, to utilize local staff, uh, particularly the manager himself, to, uh, through his staff, vet these projects and, and narrow the list down, which, if you recall, the last time they did this about three years ago, they spent a god-awful amount of time moving all over the state trying to vet all these projects, and I'm sure they learned something about that process that they had to do something to make it not so cumbersome on their staff is what I kind of got out of that and kind of what uh, Mr. Gerlach had explained to me. But I think it's a very fair way of doing it. And I think Mr. Lamb just wants to share the blame uh, if I asked us to approve it, but he can't actually approve it himself. Mr. Um, Chair. Um, <laughs> First time he ever called me that. Go ahead, sir. Um, I, I will mention that the Nash, the original Nash Community College grant, uh, Golden Leaf had problems with. We met with them, the president, and those folks. They revised their grant in a way that um, we feel became more competitive. Um, yeah, um, they. Uh, this is the first time that I know of that they didn't require some committee right. to approve the the, the uh, projects uh, that had become cumbersome in some counties, and so they had to have some person that the buck stops with, and so um, they have appointed the, the managers to make that decision. But I just, yeah, I wanted to, I want to share the blame. And give y'all the glory. Share the fame or blame <laughs> or the fame, whichever it may be. Mr. Kyle Long, you have a question? Before? Yeah, I just want to say that I definitely support both of these projects. They're good projects, and uh, I think that's a good place to put the money. I'm a little bit uh, was hopeful that uh, North Carolina Wesleyan might uh, qualify for this uh, grant program, uh, particularly with CSX coming on and they're trying to set up a logistics program at uh, the college. And I understand, uh, because I've read some information that Pat's has provided as to why it did not meet mm -hmm. the qualifications, but I was just uh, wondering, would it uh, be appropriate and reasonable to ask that uh, we have some follow-up with North Carolina Wesleyan and enter into a discussion with them and maybe Nash Community College to see if Wesleyan would be interested in a partnership with Nash Community to take the two-year program at Nash and complete the program for those that wanted it at North Carolina Wesleyan and then they could possibly qualify under this open grants program which is available and uh, they may not need the two instructors they would need for the full four-year program. They might need the one instructor for the two-year program. But is that is that an unreasonable thing to ask? Or I, do, I believe it came up during our meeting with uh, Wesleyan, um, the, the idea of an articulation agreement between the two schools where they could go from an associate's degree and then transfer. Well, is so. that something that we should uh, be a part <laughs> of or facilitate or try to help promote or? We, we certainly can. Well, something we can certainly promote. Yeah. And suggest that they do, that's probably about as far as the board needs to take it. Well, now, what does that mean, Mr. Chairman? I, I'm saying that certainly we ought to encourage okay. them to do that and support it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how we would get involved any further than that because... Well, I think I think the involvement I would like to see <clears throat> is simply something documented mm -hmm. to North Carolina Wesleyan and uh, Nash Community College right. to indicate although we regret you did not qualify mm -hmm. for this program, sure. uh, this is another option that's available and uh, anything that we could do to help you know, facilitate this option for you through Golden East, we would because I don't, I just, I just want to make sure that down the road, when this is all said and done, that everybody clearly understood that we reached out. Right. 
to North Carolina Western, which is a vital part of our community, and uh, they're trying to provide a logistics program for CSX, which may in part already exist at Nash Community College, but what can North Carolina Wesleyan do to piggyback on that program to make it a four-year program for those that might be interested in it? I just don't want that to be word of mouth down the road. Yeah. I would like that to be that we have that's available and we're willing to help provide some information. We, we can draft a letter to that okay. effect. That's delicious. You do that. That's I great. appreciate it. Like they, that. They've got that out there in front of them if they choose to. To, to seize that opportunity. If not, then we've done everything we can do. Thank you. Any other questions of board members? I'd entertain a motion for an endorsement for these two projects that we have uh, agreed to move forward. So moved, me. moved by Mr. Combs. Second. second. Second by Mr. Belfield. Any questions on that motion? All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Uh, uh, any opposed by like sign? So. Motion carries, Mr. Key. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, uh, item nine, is a uh, position request to dispatch calls uh, and presented by Sheriff Stone and Brian Brantley. Okay, and I'll uh, let Mr. Lamb begin it. Begin. Come on, come on up. Um, what can I do to make you happy? Mr. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Sheriff, come on up. And Brian, you come up. I just want to introduce this um, and let y'all take it over. I brought this up at the regular meeting on the 2nd. Um, there's been discussion for three or four or five months um, between the sheriff and Mr. Brantley and myself. Uh, and he'll go into the actual numbers. But right now, um, we've got um, many, many, many calls going into 911 non-emergency number. Um, uh, and what we're trying to do is create a position that will allow the sheriff to have someone on duty during the week, either eight or eight to five or nine to five, to to answer calls and to avoid those calls going to the 911 center. Um, many counties have such a dispatch during the day, and then at nighttime or on weekends they push a switch and those calls then go to 911. But right now, 24 seven, all those calls are going to 911. So um, this is something that we, we discussed and then they have gotten together and um, so they're gonna present what they are requesting at this point. Uh, the justification behind it is 911 is answering 175,000 calls a year is about average what they're doing. With that, there's five or maybe six people in there handling this amount of calls. Obviously, there's a lot of 911 calls that are associated with that that needs immediate attention. You have a lot of mundane calls where people are calling about civil process and calling about warrant service and calling about if somebody's in jail or what they can do to come up and get process served. So what we're asking to do is to allow us to have a desk sergeant where that phone call will be routed over to a sworn law enforcement officer so that you can get a law enforcement officer speak to him directly and get the message of what you're needing to do if you come in and need a process served that we can help facilitate that or if you've got a barking dog or something that we can help tell you well here's what you need to do to get this handled immediately not taking up time on the 911 uh, some of the other things that we have, 50 to 52,000 calls are actual 911 related, so obviously we do not want to take away from that. Approximately 120,000 phone calls are administrative and non-actual emergency calls. Most callers that are calling for the Sheriff's Office or calling are asking for civil procedures and civil papers, warrants, and general questions, which 911 obviously cannot answer those questions. It's sent over to us and then we'll get a CAD to make a phone call to do it. We're typically running five to six people on patrol out in the county. That's by the time you have one transport to the mountains or one down to uh, Jacksonville to carry a subject for either drug or mental issues, we're down to four officers and then you're having to deal with these type things, especially during the daytime. The first floor sergeant can handle those 911 calls. He'll reduce the 911 emergency calls due to the fact that they'll have time to be able to facilitate and do what they need to there. 
He'll also coordinate with the deputies to address the issues without having citizens transferred back and forth. I don't think there's nobody in here hates talking to a answer machine worse than I do. You know, I believe in public service and the way that we do that is talking to somebody. Um, this desk sergeant can also serve warrants at the magistrate's office, removing the need for the patrol deputy to leave their post and assisting fingerprinting citizens that are coming back and forth with carry conceals. Um, at the end of the day, I think it'll be a win-win for all of us because 911 will be able to send it straight to the sheriff's office. And the hours, I want to find out what the busiest time is, and I've not facilitated <coughs> that with 911 yet. If it's 9 to 6, if it's 7 to 7, whatever time it is to better facilitate it. I just think it'll be a win for both agencies. Any questions? Any questions, sir? How many, how many calls would you think this person would be taking a year to share? Uh, right now, uh, 175,000 phone calls. It says 50 to 52,000 calls are not, are not uh, 20,000, I would think. Yeah, that's so a lot. It's not like they're not going to be sitting there not doing anything. Oh, I, oh, I know they're that, probably that, going to be overwhelmed. <laughs> my biggest my issue is going to be finding somebody that wants to facilitate and, and because customer service is paramount. I'm just trying to fit. I, I'm, that's not my concern. <coughs> they won't have anything to do. Right. I know they have more. I understand. I'll have too much to do. But if you if you're sitting in 911, and there's 20,000 calls coming in a year that need to be referred over to the sheriff's department <coughs> for you know to, to answer that question, then uh, once it's referred over, what if you've got uh, multiple calls referred over? at the same time from those five operators in the And that very well might happen. Do they, do they get in there and do they get back <coughs> in there? Is one person enough or? They need to answer that and then just put it in a call order. <coughs> but I mean, that could potentially. It could, and if we get overloaded, I hate to tell you, but I'll come back and see you again. Well, that's, that's my concern. I'm not, I'm not, that, that's what I think. Is that okay, It's probably going to yeah. happen. Well, what, uh, 55 what? calls a day is what they're coming in. The and the thing is eight hours, um, <coughs> Eight hours shift, fifty-five dollars. <coughs> that's, that's a pretty busy day. Oh yeah, I know it is. What the plan is is, I, I'm not I'm not worried about where you got. Here's what right. I'm worried about. I'm worried about if you got somebody you got queued up to get to them, that they're not getting to them as quickly as they may need to get. Well, to this them. is not emergency <coughs> calls. This is well, I guess it is an emergency to you if the neighbor's dog won't quit barking or that he's on your property or something. Well, it's an emergency to somebody. It is, <laughs> but it's not the true emergency of life and death where they're going to handle that automatically. So they're going to take the call and they're going to make the determination what's That's exactly emergency right. or non-emergency. So these are non-emergency that are going over <coughs> to, this, to, this, to this queue line. Right. My, my hope is that if a second call comes in while the sergeant is on a first call it will roll back over and we're gonna to have to monitor this during the next six months and <clears throat> as he said come July 1 we may have to add either a part-time person or a second person uh, to do this this is something that um, is much needed I'm surprised we, we don't have someone in the sheriff's department who answers sheriff. I don't think one person will ever handle it. Well, I, it well, what, what are we doing now? How is it working now? <laughs> not. Right, right now. It ain't working real good, but every time I call, we would be. Calls, I get, don't yeah. get no I mean, uh, what happens now, Ms. Barnes, is where Mr. Outlaw's concerned, it backs up. If the 4121, the phone for the sheriff rings, the gentleman may or the lady may get backed up but it will be a primarily a non-emergency call. What's happening now is we're getting those administrative calls mixed in with 53,000 emergency calls, mm -hmm. and we're, the sheriff and I are seeing those people are getting, maybe, and that officer stopping a car, we're answering the phone, the guy's fussing about the neighbor's dogs barking, and we are not hearing that deputy <laughs> run that 28, and it scares our dispatcher we're gonna miss something. So. It basically puts a little bit of weight maybe on administrative calls, but it takes a lot of the weight off of the 911 emergency call. Well, you're going to have to take time <coughs> when you receive the call to determine which category it's in in that's, the first place. You have to get enough information to make that determination. That's the difference and now. And then after you get that information now, you, you've spent these few seconds with this person, then you're going to say, okay, now I need to... That's the difference, Mr. Outlaw. If you dial 459-4121, it comes to us now. 
it will go to this desk sergeant during the that busy they, time. Yeah, whatever sure. time is. Well, it so won't go to the desk sergeant until you have determined through 911 that it needs to go there, will it? Yes, sir. It will. If how, you how dial, if you dial 911 and you have a true emergency and you need the sheriff, we're gonna answer it. If you have an administrative call, like I want to know if there's a how will, how will you, how will it's it know if it's the 4121 line is dedicated directly over here? But also, what it's going to free up the 911 line is now they can say, Oh, okay, well, you need to talk to so and so at the sheriff's office and we'll send it over to the sergeant. So, so it's you, the number you're dialing with. Yeah. You wouldn't be dialing mm -hmm. now. So, you wouldn't dial 911. Right. No, so right. they don't have the sheriff's office mm -hmm. number. Right now, that if you say my neighbor's dogs bark, I'm going to call 459 4121. And, and it's not a true emergency. We still answer. Is that it. is that what they know to do now to dial this seven digit number? A lot of people just dial four one two one. Are, they, the are they doing it now? Yeah, oh right yeah. Right now it goes into a phone tree. Fifty five. Yeah. We like to take that tree out, and so it could be a person uh, that they get rather than. Uh, oh okay. So, okay. So that's right. So they dial that number now. They yes. just don't get a person. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. And okay. instead of the communicator dealing with that, they can deal with these nine one one calls. Another thing is the amount of law enforcement officers making traffic stops, making these inquiries, and the teams going into homes doing narc arrests now, they need to know these addresses when they're checking out because it's a, a worse time now than ever on assaults and people running up and down the road and stuff. And they do a good job with that, but a lot of times I'm hearing it, well, there was a delay. Yeah, there's a delay because there's 15 phone calls coming in here and you've got only five people working it. Really, on a Friday or Saturday night, somebody needs to walk in there and take a look at what those guys do every day in and day out. So let me make sure I'm straight. So now they've got a 911 and they've got a seven digit number. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And they know to call whatever their situation that is. is. So if they call the seven digit number, they get a recording. And then at some point, they are put in a queue line and then they move back to 911 with it their is. situation? Or? Many of those calls okay. are coming so, right back to us. Right, so they come. So now they won't be coming back to right. you because this person mm -hmm. will eliminate that. Absolutely. Well, yeah, I, answer I got, that you. I got you. Until <laughs> whatever time we deem uh, that is non-busy time, then it's going to go back to where it is. I'm sorry, Later. I'm going to one in the room. No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. Maybe I didn't explain Everybody else got that. No, 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 no. 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 Yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> see you. Everybody here. <laughs> but I, I still, I think, I think, in the bottom line, is you're gonna, you're not gonna have enough people. Well, and the but problem is good start. Come. At night, yeah, it's, great it's, a, yeah, it's really, just it's a start. Yeah, that's what I was gonna see. I just don't want started. the board to be thinking that you know this that is a done all and it's a done deal because I don't think it is. Yeah. Just, just well, to clarify, and now if I, if my neighbor's dog barking and I look in the phone book for the Nash County Sheriff's Department, I get this seven-digit number yes, sir. Right. and I would call it. Yes, sir. That's where it would go straight to this this now, person yeah. with this person. Yeah, right. if I dial nine one one. You're going to get that call in, in the communication center, and then you're going to still have to clarify is it an emergency That's or correct. is it? So but we've eliminated a lot of people from to call that, yeah. that seven digit number. And so also put in the, the computer and all that. Exactly. Exactly. It just exactly. kept going to the 911 operator. Right. It'll just keep yeah. it out of there. Yeah. And then 911, when it sees non emergency calls, can forward it straight over a whole lot quicker than having to dispatch somebody to it and things like that. It's a true step to an emergency 911 center. Right now, we're an administrative emergency 911 center. And, and with us working together, I think the sheriff can <clears throat> get better service, his officers can get better service to citizens and the fire and EMS. Uh, I'd like for you two to give me a, another, uh, uh, some more examples other than the dog barking uh, of, of type of call. Okay, you they call, and, all right, a perfect one is a lot of times they'll call and say, listen here, I really think this tree limb is on my property over here. What am I, that, this is one. Here's another one we just got about a month ago. A kid's throwing pine cones, five years old, and uh, he won't stop doing it. Can y'all send a deputy out here to talk to him? I had someone, um, 911 call. Call, I mean, asked me about, her phone had been, her phone number had been cloned. She said, who do I call? I said, well, call the sheriff's department. Right. You know, I, gave, I think it was the 412 one number. And we're having this all the time with older people picking up the phone. Mm -hmm. I think somebody just called wanting to uh, get some money to fix a, a IRS problem and things. And that takes time to do that, where they can pick this phone up and out of this office and say, no, I've had five of these calls today. He's familiar with all of them. He's not getting the third shift guy that's 
only dealt with it for 15 minutes. Now he's got a guy that's knowing what's going on in the office. And they'll dial 911 and you start in the beginning getting a family history of the neighbors that argued with each other for the last 10 years. Yeah. The stones are worrying me to death. They've done this, they've done that. I've got two officers stones. stopping cars. Yeah, all right, That's the Lisa right. Stone Lane. Right. That's the fuck up, I'll tell you that. Yeah. You got the Brantley's doing this and that. And our dispatch is listening to this story. And the, that we can transfer that 911 call over to him and he could say, sir, you've got to get a warrant. Where I would have to dispatch somebody to, to go to the house. Yeah. So it's just, I think efficiencies and it, it's just going to be a great, great program. And then yep. there's a lot of people that have nothing better to do than to call and, and honestly want to talk. You know, they'll yeah. call and they'll spend 15 minutes on the phone just because they have nothing else to do. And it helps those type of things. Yeah, I got one uh, uh, this week. Uh, a lady called me and said, my neighbor trying to take my property. <laughs> what must I do? There it is. Yeah, we transfer that to, the, to that deputy on the phone. You, you have something else for But that was in the city, correct, Commissioner? Well, yeah, well, well she said, I have been everywhere. I've talked to the city about the, he, he took up my stakes and moved them, you know, and, and just took my whole driveway. And, uh, what must I do? I said, you've been all those places and they didn't do nothing? She, said she went to see. They said they couldn't do nothing. So I said, well, get you a lawyer and, yeah. and, and a surveyor and, and, and look at the map, the original map says in the city, and, and, and you can clear this thing up. Is that correct? A couple of things. You, you could market a joke book on unnecessary 911 mm. calls. Um, I've heard a few in my life that are quite funny, and I won't repeat them. But... Um, I, I do want y'all to realize that th this issue came up during budget time. Um, Mr. Brantley was explaining the number of calls and you know we've got we've got uh, seven seats in our center and our backup center and we are now at what five or six yeah, depending on the, yeah depending, depending on, on the time and we're, we're looking ways to avoid expanding to those full seven seats and um, that came up and um, we, we, the three of us talked and uh, they agreed to work something out. And so um, I appreciate y'all's hard work on this. Thank you for your Thank support. You. Any other questions? Entertain a motion for approval of the request. <coughs> so moved. Second. Second. Uh, Mr. Cole, second by numerous <coughs> points for the bill. Bill. It doesn't matter. Uh, so any second. questions on the motion? All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. Uh, Any opposed by like sign? Motion carries, sir. Thank you. Next Thank item you. on our agenda is uh, item number 10. It is about naming the park at uh, Clippers. Uh, Thomas, you going to present this, sir? Yes, sir. Good evening. Good afternoon. <laughs> As you are aware, the development of the park in the Coopers area is continuing every day but there are still questions concerning the naming of the park. On previous documents and paperwork, the naming of the park is listed as Nash County Play Together Regional Park at Coopers. However, our park committee has decided on Nash County Miracle Park at Coopers. I'm here today on behalf of the park committee asking that the Board of Commissioners approve the naming of the park as Nash County Miracle Park at Coopers. Is that all the history you're going to give them? Yeah. Sure enough. <laughs> <laughs> it took a lot longer to get to that. I'm sorry. Any questions, commissioners? I, I think we've discussed this quite a bit, and, and Ms. Wills and Mr. Outlaw and myself are that park committee, and we, we we are to the point where it would be nice to go ahead and officially name the park. <clears> but <throat> it's causing some confusion and a little bit of hard feelings, maybe. If we just put it to bed, I think we would be in much better shape. It is extremely important to the Cooper's community, something we probably might not want to do, but it's so important to them. The park committee has decided that we do need to have the Cooper's, the Cooper name in there somewhere. So we tried to shorten it. You heard what he said the first time, and I can't even repeat it because the name was, but the Miracle Park at Cooper's is what we ended up with as a recommendation, as Thomas said, from the park committee. You're saying the miracle? Yes, sir. Miracle yeah. Park. 
That word derives, of course, from the fact that this park is unique to any park that we've got in the county. It is uh, going to be a lot of features in there to be all inclusive, as he also has used that word for any children or adults in the community that have some kind of special needs. There will be special needs playgrounds out there, uh, uh, certain features about walking trails and numerous other things, and, and even some long-range goals of possibly having a splash park there that will fit special needs. Uh, and of course, to be able to help us with that, uh, Trillium has granted us with a $750,000 grant that we are required to spend in some form or fashion in the facilitation of it being a miracle park for special needs uh, of adults or children in Ashkin. That's where that word came from. Any other questions on Mr. Outlaw? Can you add to that as well? Of course, not here. Nash County Miracle Park at Cooper's. I move for approval. I have a question. Sure. So, did y'all y'all discuss this with the people out there? Are they good with that? Or? We discussed it with some of the people out okay. there. Some of the main ones that were. Uh, we will not tell you that we have 100% buy-in, okay. but we feel like we have majority buy-in. May even be buy in with the exception of one, possibly. Don't That's know right. really know. Uh, I do have a motion on the floor by Mr. Outlaw. Is that a second to that motion? I will second it. Uh, second by Mr. Barnes. Any questions on that motion? <coughs> and I'm going to be kind to you. I'm not going to tell the rest of the story. Uh, Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to tell you that the naming of this park is very appropriate uh, based on what's going to be in this park. and. The only individuals, I'll say individuals, that we felt like had any concern with the name of this park, we have, I feel like, talked with and dealt with those people, and uh, they have uh, entered into no objection. That's correct. Mm. It seems like it ought to be acceptable to everyone. Yeah. Uh, I feel like we were they got Nash County and Cooper, the community, the yeah. county and yeah. the community yeah. name. Right in the heart of Cooper. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm going to call the question myself. All in favor of the motion, let me know by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed by life sign. Motion carries. Thomas, we made you have a happy day, sir. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Next item on the agenda, uh, number 11 is United Way. Stacey? Yes, I just wanted, that. Well, just wanted to give uh, the commissioners an update. Um, as you know, it in the last several years, we've done a Monster Dash, a run, a 5K run as a fundraiser to help support the county's employees United Way campaign. And last year, we had um, very low participation, um, not due to a lack of any efforts being put into it. Um, and a lot of effort has to go into it. And as a matter of fact, the runs are just becoming more and more available. Um, I think there was one that was supposed to happen. Maybe it's this coming weekend here in Nashville. And um, so we opted not to do the run this year. Um, I believe you all have your United Way um, campaign slips in your mailboxes. And I just wanted to bring mention to that. Um, you all as a board of commissioners have helped us out in years past for sponsorship for the, uh, the Monster Dash. Um, in the tune of $500. So I would just encourage you to please consider um, using your contribution form to continue to contribute to the Not United Way um, and help the employee campaign. I am a member of United Way board. Would you like to add to that, sir? Um, I would say that the Stacy and others are doing things on going to, to raise money. Um, for the United Way in lieu of the Monster Bash. Um, and we, we hope to meet our goal, and I appreciate everybody's contributions. And what's the goal? Our employee goal is 21, 22? 22. 22. $1,000. We're, we're always one of the top two or three agencies. Uh, the Nash Community College, the the, the schools, um, and for the county. And Consolidated Diesel is by far always the largest one. Private. Private, yes, yeah. it is. It is indeed. I just say my little spiel. I'm certainly a supporter of United Way. 
Uh, I think uh, we have a great participation by a lot of our employees. Uh, the percentage that do participate, mm -hmm. I, I personally would like to see go up some. Uh, some departments do seem to do real well. Some departments may not do as well, but I just think it's uh, great for the county employees to support that. Uh, I would take that organization and see will vouch for this as a very careful and long, detailed vetting process to be able to receive those funds. Uh, very detailed, and uh, anything our employees would be willing to do, I think would just show a good light on Nash County. And even funds like to the Red Cross stay local. They, right. they don't go yep. elsewhere. Yep. No action taken on that needed. Yes, okay. All right. Uh, at, at, uh, Y'all remember uh, last week we worked, Z, myself, and some of the staff worked quite a bit. Uh, some of us even met with the school board on the work for school situation. We did get news on Friday, a little bit out of lunch, that uh, we were going to basically get uh, a buy for this coming year. It will stay under the local control of our school board. Uh, during that process, which was great news, uh, I think as Z said in his email, we kind of dodged the bullet. Uh, it was a great concern to our whole board. Uh, some of us met, uh, Ms. Barnes, Mr. Belfield, myself met last Monday morning with the school board, had a very good meeting. I'm not going to elaborate on it. Uh, I don't read a lot about it in the press again. Uh, but during that process, Mr. Belfield mentioned in that meeting he'd like to see us consider doing a joint resolution between Nash County Board of Commissioners and the school board. Uh, the school board took the initiative to get uh, a person that they had employed uh, to help them write that resolution. Uh, not an employee, but it was actually a lobbyist that worked for the School Board Association and for Nash Rock about schools and legislators. They sent the resolution to us uh, on Wednesday of last week, and, and I got a, a very hard request to consider signing that resolution in case they needed it because they found out on Wednesday that they were going to be given an answer by Friday at lunchtime. We thought it would be after some meetings that were going to be held with all the parties involved. I don't know what changed that, but from Monday to Wednesday, you remember, Fred, they were going to have some community meetings and so forth, and decision would be made later. Mm -hmm. Then midweek, they determined that it was going to be made on Friday by lunchtime, we would receive that decision. Mm -hmm. uh, I did, uh, and, and I'm here uh, begging the board not to uh, last me too many times for signing this resolution without official approval but the resolution did not go anywhere uh, I signed it and Miss Wilson uh, at her request because she just felt like she may need it on Thursday to help get this thing pulled off as it turned out late Thursday she determined it would not be needed therefore she held it herself so it hasn't gone anywhere Mr. Belfield asked me Saturday night I think Fred yeah for us to consider going ahead and approving this resolution officially today. I think it's a great <clears> idea, <throat> uh, and it will be forwarded to the uh, school, uh, whatever you call it, the, the Board of Education or, or the Board of School, what is the proper Board name, Mr. Lance? Board of Education. Board of Education, Education. Fort North Carolina mm -hmm. uh, is where it would go to. She is also going to pursue, I think, getting uh, potentially a resolution from the city of Rocky Mount, possibly WB, as well as Edgecombe <coughs> County, which are currently our funding partners. Uh, I don't know where that's at. But the resolution it, it has been passed out to you. Uh, if you'll take just a minute to look at it, I kind of would like to get board approval to officially sign this resolution today and, and get it back to the school board to do with it as they feel they need to. Granted, it has been delayed for this year, but she, uh, Mr. Belfield, you requested, do you have some knowledge where she wants to go on and do it or, or something? Is that just your own thoughts? I am spoken to the chair. I uh, did uh, uh, say to uh, Ann Ed, who is the vice chair, mm -hmm. uh, and because she's a member of my church, and we see each other quite right. often there. Mm -hmm. Um, that I wanted to see it 
move forward. Right. And okay. she did not disagree. And, and Ms. Wilson also asked that we take official action on, on, on Monday as well in our board meeting. So that is the request. Uh, I will tell you, I saw a very encouraging cooperative agreement last week. Uh, I guess I probably talked to Wendy average about five times a day for three days in a week there, trying to do all we could to, to uh, keep Willowford School un under local control. Also, we worked quite a bit together on this grant application. Did everybody get a copy of this? No, I, I, I got it five seconds before okay. I came in here. I made one copy. That, that was the thing you. about the uh, I'll forward it to elementary schools uh, that had to be in by 5 o'clock today. Yeah. Uh, we worked together quite a bit on that. We made some changes, as you all know, last week in our special meeting. Uh, Maybe it didn't start out the best in the world with us changing so much, but as we talked more and more, they were very receptive to the changes that we made, which is really, uh, I think, a great movement in the right direction for us in our capital improvement plan moving forward. Uh, you see the pictures have completely changed, much better pictures in here at suggestion of this board, as well as numerous other things about it, uh, the amount of the total grant request and what local funds were available and so forth. It's uh, it's still a little bit hairy dealing with the school board, but it's getting better. And I hope this board continues to work to make it better. Uh, I see some great movement in that direction anyway. Any questions about this resolution? Yeah, mm -hmm. This resolution hasn't gone anywhere. It has not gone anywhere. No, I sir. I'm, a, I'm okay with the resolution. Mm -hmm. There's one area that I wish had been worded a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to highlight that area to you. Sure. Uh, in the third paragraph on the second page, it says, whereas it is likely that the outside operators that their work to run Williford would be for a, would be a for not a for-profit entity. Here's the part I don't like. That would be funneling scarce local Nash County dollars out of Nash County, which implies, to me anyway, that we are not funding them locally adequately. I would have preferred that would say, and if it hasn't gone anywhere, maybe it could still say that would be funneling uh, local county tax, local Nash County tax, tax dollars out of the county and whereas, because I, I don't particularly like that word, but uh, you don't well, like whatever it's scary. Okay, I do not. Just delete that. Because I think that implies that we are not adequately funding our school system, and I and I believe we are. I honestly believe we do adequately fund our school system locally. I, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at the pleasure of the board, whatever you guys want to do. Well, you can take it two ways. It's either scarce local tax dollars period, which there's always scarce tax dollars uh, in, in the minds of government, excuse me, government employees, but, yeah. uh, or it could be, as you said, Wayne, uh, and, and it would do the same thing with the word not in there. Mm -hmm. Certainly, exactly. no That's question right. about that. Uh, I would be glad to ask that question if it could be removed. I think you're I, saying the same thing if you yeah. take it out and you just say local Nash County tax dollars out of the county and Right. Mm -hmm. You're saying the same thing. Cool. Mm -hmm. I'd be glad to ask that question. I would like a little bit of latitude if yeah. indeed they had I mean, some big concern about it that we could leave it there, but I would certainly entertain. I, I wouldn't see them. why unless they felt like we were not adequately funding them, gotcha. they would have a problem with removing that gotcha. word because okay. uh, well, they could view it both ways like you said you did. Right. But anyway, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll support it. Okay. Any other thoughts on it? entertain a motion to approve uh, with the wording Mr. Outlaw had that I would talk to the chairman about taking that word out. I offer a motion that uh, we approve the joint resolution okay. to send to the uh, ISD. Okay. They have mo second that motion. Second. Second by Mr. Outlaw. Any questions on the motion? All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed by the like sign. Thank the board for fulfilling that request. Uh, motion to be approved. Uh, Mr. Tyler, I'll turn the meeting over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before uh, we go into reports, I want to 
mention one thing that uh, happened to me that I want to share with the board, and uh, it's in relation to our VA office. And I think, uh, Tyler, I think maybe we have 8,000 or so veterans yes, sir, it's about in, that in Nash County, and I just want to publicly thank you for the job that you're doing. And what I'm getting ready to share is an indication of the type of uh, job that we are getting from Tyler. I got a call, I won't give you the lady's name, I'll give it to you, but uh, she called me and left me a message I wasn't in. She uh, called and commended the Nash County Veterans Office and the work that uh, Tyler and his assistant Anthony Rogers were doing. Miss Bill, uh, she stated they are great people to work with, very kind, nice and professional. I called her and uh, I thanked her for those uh, words, uh, which often I don't get words like that. Normally what I get is somebody's got some kind of problem with a road or a dog or something like that. But uh, I did appreciate that call and I told her that uh, I would share that with you. I'm gonna give you her name and you know, next time she's in or her son's in, you might wanna. Yes, sir, yes, sir. I, I, very, I, I, very complimentary of the department. <laughs> Good. Thank you, thank you again for what you're doing with the veterans in Nash County. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, commissioner reports, District 1, Ms. Richardson. Um, the Cat Gilbos have not met since we met. They will meet next month, but everything is going good. Great, thank you, Ms. Richardson. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Belfield, District 2. District 2, uh, the Farmers Market, uh, we haven't had a meeting since, you know, we meet in September. Met in September, we probably won't meet anymore until January, but the market is scheduled to close the week of Thanksgiving. Um, the Juvenile Crime Prevention Council, uh, we meet Thursday, this coming Thursday. The Upper Coastal Plain, Council of <coughs> Government, we meet tomorrow night. Uh, Tar River Transit, we met last Thursday, and we approved an update on, on drug, our drug program and alcohol plan for, for the employees. Uh, DOT required us to update it, and so we approved that update. It's pretty lengthy, but uh, it covers practically everything that you, you should be covering with employees, especially drivers and handling, carrying uh, people from place to place. We also approved a uh, community transportation program assistant, assistance applications with three of them, and one was for $328,522. That's basically for administrative, uh, handling the administration of the of transit. And uh, local match is required in this is $49,279. We also approved um, capital uh, funds, and that was $587,250. Local match is $58,700 and uh, $25 uh, local match. <coughs> and uh, we approve a $270,847,000 federal operating funds, which requires $135,424 uh, local match. The total three grants uh, local match would come to $243,428. Now that money will come from um, fees that the uh, transit uh, collect uh, to handle the local match. It, it wouldn't require any tax money. Uh, that last grant there is to replace the vans and we have there's 13 of them that, that's going to have to be. Uh, well, it go from, uh, I have to look, the last one, I think the age, or anyway, I can tell you this right off without even looking at it. 
any van that has 185,000 miles on it or over, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, it's up. DOT suggests that they be replaced. And what we have to do is uh, put them on surplus state. with the state uh, for it to be sold. Mm -hmm. We can't sell them locally. I mean, local people, we let them know about it, but it's handled through the state. Uh, let me see what those models are. Well, I, I, I don't think it's that. I don't think it, I don't think it's important. Yeah. The most important thing is the mileage. Right. Yeah, but uh, some of those vans been there uh, almost ten years. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you can just move them. That's that's all I have. I got two meetings this week. One tomorrow night, Upper Coastal Plain, and JCPC Thursday morning. And that would uh, take me uh, the farmers market next meeting would be in January. Thank you, Bill, for your good busy man. Mm -hmm. District three, Commissioner Cohn. Uh, Health and Human Services has not met since last time we had a meeting. It does meet this Thursday, and the Ag Advisory Board has not met. Thank you, Commissioner Cohn. District four, Commissioner Barnes. Um, the NASH UNC Hospital met on October fifth. Mm -hmm. That was the first meeting with Dr. Ian Buchanan there as the mm -hmm. interim CEO and that board meeting went well. The board members um, that are on the respective committees, the chair, chairman of those committees gave the staff reports rather than, gave the reports from the committee rather than the staff, which were really well. Um, Received. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's a change, isn't it? That's a change. Well, it was recommended by Chris Ellington before, but it's, it's, it's being enforced, mm -hmm. so to speak, now. And it works out well because you don't get all those medical terms in there. You get, you know, so layman's you terminology. All those in there, exactly. So um, we also were updated on um, the construction project for the cafeteria renovation that will begin on December first, and with the completion date of end of February. But we were updated on the CEO search timeline. The final candidate interview should be the first or second week in December and the potential start date for the new CEO should be in February of 2018. So that's moving along well. Um, I passed out the information that we received on Coastal Plain Hospital just to keep all the board members um, informed um, about the emissions and discharge from, you know, from Amanda Flory, the information right. that we get to keep that on everybody, uh, everybody's radar because sometimes the mental health part of the hospital can fall through the cracks, it seems. Um, and I also asked about the psychiatrist position for our, our consolidated health board, um, and I put that out there. Although nobody jumped that, in, you know, recommended nobody anything. Jumped on it. Nobody jumped on that real hmm. quick. Um, the Trillium Regional Board met also. Um, so Trillium is made up of three regional boards and one governing board, and all three of the regional boards will meet with the governing board. Um, in I think in January or February, so I think that will be great to get everybody there um, to know the, the get to know the um, governing board and be able to you know have a voice on that. Um, we received some information, um, and Tyler, you may know more about this too about the VA, the expansion of emergency medical care for the. Me service members with other than honorable discharges? Yes, uh, somewhat. Okay, so they are expanding. I don't know the exact definitions of it, but basically, if you just didn't have an honorable now, if you have anything other than dishonorable, they're considering it now, particularly for people with PTSD, if they went AWOL. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I think they were not able to get. Yeah, beforehand, they would say, no, you're not eligible for right. it, and now they're saying, well, maybe it's a mental health issue, and so we're going to grant you VA access and all that. So. That's a good thing. Yeah, that's a good thing, and yeah. that's you know, yeah. part of our whole mental health. Right, 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 and getting everyone. Awesome. We were also updated on um, all the, these are some of the um, reinvestment in the community that Trillium does. They have a lot of, a lot of programs um, where they reinvest, and this gives a dollar amount um, 
for all of their projects that they have done in their catchment area, which is a substantial amount. Um, it was one interesting note was brought out that um, Trillium's attorney's office was um, received a letter from the city of Lumberton asking if they had any extra funds that they would like to have a miracle park in Lumberton, which is not even in the Trillium catchment area. <laughs> oh, that was interesting. Um, uh, on Thursday, I attended, along with other staff members, the open house at Integrated Family Services, which is um, part of one of our agencies that um, has mental health services part of Trillium and I also have information they want to make sure everybody's aware I press not here <laughs> they left there you go well they wanted to get the word out so that our citizens will know who to contact in in, um, in case of a crisis or an emergency this keeps people out of the ER so that they um, do a great job I know our, our, our sheriff's department has used them so, um, and then several of us also attended on Friday the round table at Nash Hospital uh, with Dr. Mandy Cohen, the Secretary of Health and Human Services. Um, Senator Bryant, I think was a, uh, one that put that all together. Uh, Representatives Richardson and Willingham were also there. We had probably over 50 people there. A lot of Nash County staff were there as well as an, um, adjoining counties in the in the area and uh, she explained some of the the uh, health care reform that's going on medicaid reform so it was it was well attended stacy and z were there too but that's all i have and also uh, donna <coughs> boone uh, Ms. bill hill mm -hmm. and amy mm -hmm. uh, Hamm oh yeah miss richardson was there and miss richardson and jen no you weren't there no, no, no. stacy was there yeah I, I was in the back seat. She was in the front. Having one of our board members on the Nash Health Board is is beneficial, and you were very helpful to me recently when I had a question. So I thank you very much. Absolutely, for that. I, I passed that along. Outlaw, if I could also add to that, Mr. Barnes did do a good job of taking the wrong horn, but in that construction update uh, or going over the budgets on the project going forward, now she had a lot of questions about one aspect uh, of. Uh, something they were going to update which was a patio and the cost of it and uh, they eventually uh, have I think peers like me they put it on the shelf right this minute and reevaluating the need for that uh, due to her and the other board member mm -hmm. was Bill, Bill Lane mm -hmm. with chicken filet that questioned what they were doing in that particular aspect of it so uh, it's very effective to have yeah, a uh, commissioner on that. Your caring compassion made a difference in somebody's life this past weekend. I thank you for that. Yeah. The other thing I'll just add, uh, I think they asked Lisa about it first, but I did go to lunch at the request of uh, Jim Lilly with the uh, gentleman from UNC that is in charge of it now. One day last week, Lisa went early in the week, mm -hmm. by Tuesday, I think. Had a real good meeting with them. Uh, they just wanted to update me or, or he wanted to update me in did on what was going on uh, very good meeting uh, it seems like they are really really trying uh, they have a severe nurse, nurse shortage right this minute they went over numerous things they were doing there they have circled back around with Nash Community College and uh, got more buy-in from the hospital back to Community College uh, at Nash to help provide them future nurses moving forward uh, with several things they're mm -hmm. doing, but I was really impressed with the guy. Uh, as I told Lisa, I actually asked him when he got through giving all his update, had he applied for the job, and uh, he said uh, no, but it was certainly a job he would sure like to have. And then he explained what uh, all his duties were with UNC Hospital, which were a long list, and I ended up telling him we probably couldn't afford him anyway. Uh, so uh, might be a good thing he did apply for the job. But, very impressive guy. Uh, I learned a lot of that that meeting last week. Yeah. That, uh, what was that, Jim? Saying that Dr. Buchanan. Right. Buchanan, right? What was that you were saying that they were about to add on, but they kind of put it on the back burners to? But they had a patio that they were going to renovate in the cafeteria project. A uh, patio. A patio, outside patio that I think they use for eating and just general outside fresh air. 
but they were spending a tremendous amount of money on it. And I think but for employees, for employees, yes, sir. Well, it would be it was at the cafeteria. It could be employees. It could be public. Now they're going to certainly renovate it, but they're going to do something that's a lot less. I, I'm not even going to quote the figure that they were going to spend to start with because it was. Uh, well, I was, at least I couldn't understand I, how they could even spend yeah, that money. Well, the reason I trying. asked to make it clear because I was thinking it was something relating to medical. No, sir. No, no it and, was and, sim and, simply leisure time. Oh, leisure. Well, yes, sir. And, uh, sometimes we get to have too much leisure. Yeah, I think that, that was uh, a little overboard. But they're certainly going to do it, but it's going to be at a, a lot less cost. You know, they lowered the budget, but then the last report that I got, they actually have regrouped on it, I think. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you, Mr. Outlaw. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, also, I hope y'all been getting the um, updates from Dr. Buchanan. I've been forwarding we to you we have. weekly. Mm -hmm. So that's yep. good Very information nice. in there, yep. too. Mm -hmm. We'll get more information from the hospital than we've ever got. Absolutely. <laughs> sure do. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, district 5, my district, we had the groundbreaking ceremony for the new engineering cosmetology buildings on October the 12th. I was unable to attend due to another commitment, and uh, Ms. Wells was sick. So I want to thank uh, our chairman for attending that groundbreaking ceremony. The uh, estimated occupancy of that building will be, those buildings will be June of 2018, uh, making Building C at Nash Community College available to start the necessary retrofitting to accommodate the early college. So I know the necessary pre-planning has got to take place and uh, I'm sure that uh, that will take place at the appropriate time. The next Board of Trustees meeting will be on Monday, November the 20th. Uh, the RPO TAC committee, our next meeting is November the 15th. That's an open meeting at the Wilson Ops Center in Wilson, if anyone would like to attend. Uh, broadband, uh, Ms. Uh, McGee spoke briefly to that and we'll be hearing something on that probably within 30 days or so. That completes my report. Uh, District 7, Chairman Davis. Uh, Mr. Outlaw, I, I did ask Ms. Wells, or Ms. Wells, I didn't ask her, but when I visited her earlier today, she did said she would not have a report had she been here today because <laughs> neither one of her committees had met. Uh, on commission, District 7, uh, Travel uh, <coughs> Development Authority, Tourism Development Authority has not met since our last meeting. Uh, we are still working on uh, with the mill to relocate, relocate travel and tourism to the brew mill. We've actually have agreed on a lease there on Falls Road in what is termed as the Yellow House. I think you will be familiar with that when you ride down Falls Road. So at some point they will be relocating there uh, to give them a much more visible location. Uh, the travel and tourism, the board, as well as the Tourism Development Authority has been working on that jointly. Rock Mountain MPO, as you know, met the last time we met, which was on 9-18. I, I did get there about three or four minutes late. Uh, they were getting right ready to cancel the meeting because they didn't have a quorum. But they get in there, allowed us to have the meeting, and then we had a couple more show up even later than I was. Uh, really nothing of uh, substance to report there. It was a pretty routine meeting. We had uh, approved all of our list of improvements at the last meeting. So I uh, don't know of anything uh, to really the board be interested in there. Uh, the shell building uh, at Middlesex, uh, I think, is going along fine. Uh, you know, we've hired a contractor. Uh, we are in process, Michael, shortly picking colors and so forth. Anything to add to that? I just need to get that meeting scheduled to select colors and right. uh, we approve the configuration of the office on the front of the building. Right. And uh, okay. civil con the civil um, consultant is moving forward with uh, updating the plans and getting the permits revised so that we can move forward with that revised configuration. All right, and the steel's in the process of being ordered for it, and we do need to get it in colors. <coughs> And then uh, Go Rock uh, Improvements, we met last that committee on 927. Uh, it was basically an update from the state. Uh, it is actually kind of out of the committee's hands right at this moment uh, as far as the aspirin in that they're working on. The state uh, has gotten all the information they need and we're just really waiting for them to 
proceed with uh, them doing the things that Step Spence. Can you add anything to that? Uh, and of course, you might want to add the uh, other uh, days in also what happened on that as well. Well, the Ashburn Inn I received today from Chief Deputy Medina uh, oh, a spreadsheet here. of their of the city of Rocky Mount's charges, but they're still going to update with their own records of their own investigation, so we're still waiting on that. As far as the days in, um, I held the foreclosure sale the day after our last Gold Rock meeting. Nash County submitted a bid in the amount of $90,000, which was basically Nash County taxes owed plus the City of Rocky Mount taxes. The 10 day upset period has expired and we are the higher bidder. And we need to get together and talk about how we're going to handle that with the City of Rocky Mount as far as how we move ahead with possible demolition cost. So basically, we are we the county is the owner of the property four acres now? Well, we haven't closed yet, but we'll okay. be closing soon. Okay. That's a good move. Yeah. And then, of course, we, we know, as we reported earlier, the Gold Rock Inn has been sold, and the current operator was allowed to stay in there until some date in November. I don't know when that is. But after that date, we would expect demolition to proceed at that location, too. So it's, it's going real well. Yeah. Really, it is a slow process. Uh, there are a lot of County hours in that from numerous departments, uh, and of course the Sheriff's Department, uh, Medina and his group has led that charge, and I think done a great job of getting us to the point where we hope to see some great improvements out there shortly. And I appreciate what everybody has done, all the departments. It's not a fun thing to do, but I think it's been a thing that we're going to all appreciate sometime up the road. And that's all I had. Mr. Thank you, Allen. Chairman Dave. Uh, Lee, do you have any other comments you want to make before I turn it back over to the chairman? Um, I will give you all a report on sales tax through two months. Um, our sales tax number is 2.7 million, um, which is about 12, 13 percent above last year. And so that's a reflection of the economy during the months of July and August. So, uh, do, do you see any? Because sometimes that thing gets a little off by a month. Do you see anything that indicates that may be a fluke, or do you think that'll hold? Mm. You know, we had that one time last year, but then the next month it dropped down. And we right. realized it was kind of reporting. We expect um, the non. We've got some large nonprofits uh, in the county that get refunded their sales mm -hmm. tax. Um, the they may not have come out yet. They haven't. And, and, and last year we had that one dip in um, October, so I would suspect the year before it was uh, in September. So, 12% um, is awful strong. That would be great. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We'll have a month where we have quite a dip, I'm sure, or it might be over two months where it's a little less. But just we budgeted um, 13 9 this year and if we stay on where we are right now we'll be over 16 million so um, but I doubt we're going to stay at that level mm -hmm. it'll probably drop back some but um, it does indicate that the economy in the in the county is is doing better so I thought I'd bring that y'all's attention and other than that I don't have anything thank you thank you Mr. Chairman back to you all right uh, is, just uh, before Yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to give you this information on the advance. The oldest one, we got two of them that's 2007, one 2009, and one, two, three, four, five, six of them, 2011, and one 2014. That's to be replaced. Okay. All right. Very good. Is there a need for a closed session, Mr. Lamb, Mr. Durham? I don't believe so. No, sir. You don't need one. All right. Great. That said, I'd entertain a motion to close the meeting. Or adjourn. We don't need to get back together this month. There's no. No. A motion to adjourn by Mr. Mars. There's a second. Right, second. Second by Mr. Belfield. Any questions on that motion? All right, you didn't join in there, Mr. Richardson. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed by like side. Motion carries.